repeat his word to us. His word that is a word of faith to us. How many times does he have to reiterate the same thing over and over again so that we will believe his word that he has decreed this infallible, this unchangeable, that is powerful, is penetrating, is healing, is delivering. It is forthcoming. It will be done. It will be perfected. It will be executed on earth as it is in heaven. And so that's why we can pray in the middle of the threats and the storms. As the huge armies were coming against little Israel, and Jehoshaphat was frightened. He was a king. He was frightened because they seemed like two little flocks in comparison to the enemy that was threatening to attack them. And on their way to attack them, they could have annihilated them in the physical realm. But he wasn't depending on the physical realm. He wasn't depending on his soldiers. He wasn't depending on his armor that was visible. He wasn't depending on his troops that were inept at defending their country. He was simply depending on the Lord that says, it doesn't matter how small we are, how few we are, how outnumbered we are, that God can do anything to deliver us. He doesn't need a huge army. He doesn't need those physical weapons. He doesn't need those allies. He only can conquer for you when you line up your faith in him. Believing that no matter how small and insignificant you feel and how big and powerful the enemy attack is against you and the threats are real and concrete and forcing themselves against you, how can we withstand that? Because we know that with God, we can run through a troop and leap over a wall. We know that the walls cannot be a barrier for us. We know that they will come down, those strongholds of Satan, <coughs> those strongholds that come against you are not stronger than God. That the enemy cannot withstand the unseen power of God in your life, that he has invested in you, that he has given you weapons that are spiritual weapons that the enemy cannot withstand. He cannot outpower those spiritual weapons of your warfare. So you're not attacking physical with physical, mental with the mental, emotional with emotional, legal with legal. You are before the very throne room of God. And you have the supreme, the preeminent, the almighty God that's on your side. That there is no such thing as appeal. There's no such thing as contesting the word of God because it cannot succeed. His word is final. His word is the absolute authority. It's sovereign. He is the sovereign. And his word stands. He is the judge. He is the advocate. He's your friend that sticks closer than a brother. He stands alongside to help you so that if you feel so small and insignificant, you're standing next to the great I am. The almighty God, the living word of God, the unseen weapons that are mighty through God pulling down these strongholds of Satan. And so how did they approach the enemy? They sought the Lord. They sought his help. Their help 
they knew came from the Lord because if he didn't help them, they would be annihilated. They would be overwhelmed. They would be overcome. They would be outpowered. Hands down, the enemy wins because they weren't big enough, strong enough. They didn't have the allies. They didn't have any defense compared to the attack of the enemy poised against them. So they prayed. They sought the Lord. The prophet spoke. Hezekiah, or not Hezekiah, but Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat. Hold the people to praise. They put the singers for. They begin to sing. We sing not necessarily because we're happy, because circumstances will dictate happiness. But we sing because we have the joy of the Lord in spite of our circumstances. We don't sing because we feel good. We sing because God is good. It doesn't depend upon what we see, what we feel, what we're experiencing, what's going on in our lives. It depends upon our faith in him and God's favor that rests upon us no matter what we see, how we feel, how many enemies are screaming at us and how big they are. We can combat that by faith in him. Their faith was demonstrated by their singing and making praise unto God first. They didn't send the army out. They sent the singers out, the praisers out, the worshipers out, and God fought for them. They didn't have to do anything at all. They just, they, they showed up. And they began to worship God and sing and praise him because he's God Almighty in the midst of them, that he was bigger than the enemy, even though the enemy was bigger than them. They're not bigger than God with them. So sometimes we feel overwhelmed by the onslaught of the enemy, on the threats of the enemy that seem so real. But our reality is in the way, the truth, and the life. Our reality does not line up in the physical, the mental, the emotional, but it is spiritual weapons to give you a spiritual reality and a spiritual outcome that will overcome the flesh and the enemy and the devil and the attacks to bring about the very things that you need in the realm of this life. Yes, you fight the battles in the spiritual sense that brings you the mental and emotional and physical and relational and financial and situational breakthrough. That you don't have to have the ability. You don't have to have the answers. You have to have the answer, which is Jesus Christ. The one that's called alongside to help you. That no matter what, your help comes from the Lord. It's good to say, your help comes. Your help comes. Not too late. Not ever too late. But always on time. Your help comes from the Lord. So it's not from a person, a place, a thing, or what you can do. It comes from God. And as we look unto him, he's the one that will give you good success. People can have success. And they call it success when they have fame, when they have fortune, when they have a following, when they have earthly goods. That is not good success unless that comes from God. He tells you not to set your heart on riches but that we have the riches to be in glory by Christ Jesus. You can set your heart on that, and you can set your affections on things that are above where Christ sits on the throne, and then he tells you that you will be seated in heavenly places with him far above these storms, far above principalities and powers of darkness that his enemies are at his footstool. And when you sit up in heavenly places with him, 
because you're not operating in the realm of the natural. You're operating in the realm of the supernatural. The power of God that he's invested in you, that's with you, that's around you, that empowers you to overcome and overwhelm the enemy. Not just barely making it to the finish line, but you're more than a conqueror. That you're always going to triumph in him. He causes you to triumph in him. So the odds may be against you. The words of others are negative. They're not life, they're death. They're not prosperity, but poverty. They're not success, but defeat. They're not health, but counterproductive. They're not healing and delivering, but they're bondage words and weakening words. But that is not our authority. That is not our position. That is not our faith. That is not our belief. That is not who we are, what we've been made to be in Jesus Christ. That we have weapons that are superior, not inferior. It doesn't matter how many people are against you when God is for you. It doesn't matter what they say. His word is final. He has the word that he speaks in your life. He says, I am the God that heals you. He didn't say, I'm the God that sickens you. He says, I'm the God that heals you. I'm the God, the Father of all comfort. He didn't come to destroy you. He came to help you, to heal you, to deliver you. He came to empower you. And it doesn't matter how puny you feel. Our strength is in him. We are strong in the Lord, not in yourself. And the power of his might, not in your power. But that might and that power that we're strong in is bigger than any enemy, in any other words against you, in any other opinions, thankfully including your own. You can align your thoughts with the devil and say, yeah, you're right, I'm no good to count. I can't make it. I'm not smart enough, good enough, strong enough. I don't have the money. I don't have the support. I don't have the help. I, I just can't help myself. I've had people say, I just can't help myself. And I thought, well, that's a good position to be in. Because when you can't help yourself, then maybe you will look up. <laughs> Instead of looking to see what you can do, you can look up onto him and know what he can do. It's seeing beyond in the realm of the spirit rather than the flesh. Because the flesh is weak. Our flesh is always going to be weak because what we see in the natural is of the flesh. What we feel in the natural is physical, mental, emotional. But when we can step into another realm, a higher realm, and know that God is with us, the greater one, the all-knowing one, the all-powerful one that empowers you, enlightens you, leads you and guides you, gives you knowledge and wisdom and understanding that you didn't have, that you didn't learn out of some book somewhere, that you didn't buy the ministry tapes to learn from somebody else. The Holy Spirit taught you. The Holy Spirit leads you. The Holy Spirit enlightens you. The Holy Spirit is with you to give you good success. Not success, but God's success, good success. Success that others may not deem as successful. Your bank account may not match theirs, but they may be wealthy, but you are blessed. They never have enough, no matter how much they have. 
but you always have more than enough. They may believe that they can buy their way out of problems, but you know that that has already been purchased for you. That you do not have to come up with it because no matter what you have, it's not going to tend to life unless that comes from the unspeakable gift, Jesus Christ. Making you a conqueror, making you a winner, giving you victory in Jesus. That's overwhelming the enemy. Not just getting by, not just getting through, not just barely making it. So you say, oh, finally, I got this all whipped and beat up. We don't have to be. We can go and face the enemy with praise and thanksgiving unto God, looking back, looking now, and looking forward, looking unto Jesus who was and is and is to come in your life. He was there all the time. He is there with you, and he will go with you all the way. The one that was, the one that is, the one that is to come. The almighty, all-sufficient, all-wise, ever-present, all-loving, all-powerful God. That will not only see you through, but will give you overwhelming victory. How do you want that? Mm -hmm. I just barely make it to the finish line all wet. When that happens in our lives, it's because you're walking in your own strength, you're walking in your own ability. You're walking in your own thoughts that are so inferior because the enemy may outsmart you, but he cannot outsmart God. He may be able to whip you if you're walking in the flesh and you forget that he has empowered you by the Spirit of God. Then you overcome, you overwhelm, you stand. You will not be pushed back. You will not be defeated and you will not quit. You are not a quitter. You don't go by someone else's rules. He is the ruler, the supreme, the preeminent, the superior. Lord God Almighty in your life. So we can stand when we feel weak. We can stand in his strength. Stand in his word. Stand in his spirit. And walk in it. Walk in victory. Walk in praise. Knowing the outcome is assured. How can we know? Because he tells us that we will have the victory. That no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you'll condemn. He'll condemn it for you. You can do it with him. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And if you're a servant of the Lord, then you've got it made. You have been made by him. You have been reformulated by him. You are his handiwork in the realm of the spirit, living in a body, living in this world, but not of the world, not bound by the world. The sun has set you free and there is no prison that can bind you. There are no ropes or chains that can bind you. You are not bound, you are free indeed, absolutely. You are not a prisoner of hopelessness. But you are free in him. You are part of him, and he is part of you. You are submerged in his spirit, submerged in his body, submerged in his name, baptized in his name, the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, baptized in his body, so that you don't have to worry about yours, because you are submerged in him. 
You are complete in him. You are submerged in the name of Jesus, that name that's higher than any other. And in the name of the Father, the Holy Spirit, the triune God, baptized in his name, baptized in his spirit, baptized in his body, so that we are no longer living in our own little tiny mentality, or our own little tiny ability, or our own little selves. But we have lost ourselves, died daily, so that we could live in resurrection power and glory. It is perpetual, it is continual, it is a constant and not a variable. Meaning that it is not able to change when your circumstances change. Nobody can change that. Nobody can alter that. Nobody can take you out of the hand of God. Nobody can unbaptize you and take you out of his body, take you out of the Christ of God, who is your, your everything and all, and you're baptized in his body. Guess what? He's alive forevermore because he lived, you live also. You're not going from weakness to weakness, but from strength to strength. You're not going from fear and doubt, but you're going from grace to grace. You're going as a believer and a receiver, not a doubter and a powder. We win. We have won. We won in the past. We win today. And we win tomorrow because he is that ever-present help. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and forever, Jesus Christ is Lord of everything and all. And you made him the Lord of your life, and your life is hidden in him. And you're living in resurrection power as a new creature, a new person, a new It's not our business either because we're about the Father's business. It's not our kingdom, but we're in a kingdom that's without end. It's not our problem because God has no problems. It's not our way because he's that way and truth and life. We've got a different highway. We've got a different way. We've got a different life. We've got a different life. We've got a different truth and it doesn't have to be someone else's reality. If they're stuck in this world and stuck in what they can do or someone else can do or some other solution, you're not stuck in that mother. You are not drowning in defeat. You are not able to be overwhelmed by the storms of this life. But you are a mighty conqueror and it may not look like it to them, but you just stand. You just walk in the Spirit of God, clothed in His glory, clothed in His Spirit, putting on the Lord Jesus Christ, who cannot be defeated, who cannot be conquered, who cannot be overwhelmed, who can never lose the battle or the war. 
There's that old saying that winning the battle but losing the war. That's not our Lord. He doesn't lose the battle and he doesn't lose the war. And he's not a loser, he's a winner. And he's not a destroyer to you. He's a builder and a maker. He's your redeemer, your savior, your lord, your deliverer. He's your provider, he's your helper. He's the bread of life, not the sour bread of death. You don't have to eat that that doesn't come from God. You don't have to ingest what doesn't belong to you. You have the bread from heaven, which is Jesus Christ. You have the power of the Spirit of God. You have weapons that are, are not able to be defeated. You have the Spirit of truth that denies everyone else's reality. That is not your reality. You know what your reality is. You know what you stand on. You know that it's not able to be defeated. So if what you're believing is not able to be defeated, you're on the right track. You're on the road of righteousness. It's the righteousness that we receive through faith in him. He imputes righteousness unto you for your faith in him and what he can do and who he is and what he said and him being faithful and true. And everything else is a liar! But he cannot lie. He cannot change his mind. He's not threatened. He can't be abused. He already defeated Satan. And you have already been given the victory in Jesus. Your Savior. How many want that? Yes. So how do we approach Stanley? It's kind of hard sometimes when you're hurting to praise. Is that true? Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, it's kind of hard. But you know what? We can praise him anyhow. Yes. We don't sing because we're happy. We sing because we have the joy of the Lord. We don't sing because we're going to be free. We sing because the sun has set us free. We don't sing because we're going to win the battle. We sing because we've already won. We won. We sing because we're on top and not bottom. That we are the one that overwhelms the enemy even though he outnumbers us. He's not bigger than the greater one in you. Not just with you, but he is. Not just around you as the wall of fire about you, but he is. Not just under you, but he is. Not just covering you, but he does. But the great I am in the midst of you, in your heart, your life, your body, which is the temple of God. It belongs to him. Your body belongs to him. And so he is the great physician. It's who we can depend on. Can we not? Can we not trust him when we can't see, when we can't hear, and nothing seems to be going right or well? When we're not feeling good, we know that we will. We know that we're on the way. How are we going to make it happen? We sing not because we're happy, but we sing because we know. We know we win. We know that God will see us through. We know that we will not be panting at the end of the line. Did David, when he faced Goliath, Goliath pant and puff after that big battle with the giant? No. No. Cut off his head and he's got a trophy, the head of the giant. 
and sounds gruesome, but you know what? The devil's very gruesome. He comes to still come and destroy your faith, destroy your joy, destroy your peace, destroy your comfort. When God is the founder of mercies and comfort, got all comfort. When Satan comes along to steal, kill, and destroy anything and everything, but you know what? Faith is the victory that overcomes the world, overcomes the devil, overcomes the attacks, overcomes the onslaught of slew against you, that you can stand. You can, if you can't run, you can walk. If you can't walk, you can stand. If you can't stand, you can sit in the presence of God. Yeah? In heavenly places with Him. You know? And then after you've sat there in heavenly places with Him, then you can stand up. And then you can you can wait on the Lord. He renews your strength. Sitting in heavenly places with Him so that you can stand still and see His salvation so that you can walk by faith in the strength of God. But you've got that renewed strength. And you wait on him, trust in him. How do we wait on God? You just sit still? No, you be still. Yeah, be still and know that I'm God in the midst of you. Be still. Because in our minds, it's racing. Our emotions are off the chart. You know, we fear is on every side. But fear does not have to be in you. It can be all around you, but you can have faith no matter what fear is on every side. At times when you're afraid, David said, you trust in the Lord. How can you wait on God when you trust in him? You trust in him rather than your circumstances. You trust in him no matter what comes your way. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. That's the beginning. Don't lean on your own understanding, because that'll fail every time. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. He'll direct your path. He will cause that path to be a path of righteousness. Because you believe in Him, He gives you that righteousness. You don't have to make that path, it's created for you. It's imputed into you, given to you, to go the right way and do the right thing and take the right steps at the right time to get the right answers to your questions because he is your righteousness. More than just imputing it into you, but the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And he puts you on the right path at the right time to do the right thing, to get the right results. Come on. He will teach your hands to war. He will empower you with mighty weapons, spiritual weapons, that no enemy can conquer. No enemy can silence the word of God can nullify it, can keep you back, push you under. You're going over, you're going out, you're going through, and you're going to be on the other side because we have faith in God. And we're going to sing and praise and shout the victory this side of the battle because the battle may rage, but the enemy is not bigger. He's already defeated. So we can already sing victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. We can already sing it. Our God can do anything. We can already sing. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus is to trust and obey. Yes. We can sing unto the Lord yes. even a new song. Praise and thanksgiving unto him yes. this side of the battle. 
knowing that when we praise him, then we're already proclaiming our God that reigns. He's alive. He is alive. Yes, he is. He's alive yes, in your yes, situation, yes. in your circumstance, in your dilemma. He's alive! And he's big enough, strong enough, good enough, faithful enough, powerful enough, wise enough. To bring you certain victory. <laughs>